I really didn't realize it was the last flight. Uh, I thought we had one more flight to do. However, when I did find out it was the last flight, I was quite happy to do it. It was the last CF-100 in the world. of course. But the dignitaries came anyway, for this was the end of the line. The last CF-100 in the world was being placed on a concrete pedestal at the Canadian Forces Base in Saint-Hubert, Quebec. The April showers came as no surprise. It was as if the sky was also paying tribute to one of its own. The last entry in the logbook of CF-100 number 760 was the signing over of the plane by Colonel Peter Carver, number one Air Reserve Wing, to the Canadian Forces Base and Colonel Pierre Lalonde. We were saluting the end of an aviation era. At the ceremony which followed, Pratt & Whitney Canada President L.V. Smith expressed his own particular thanks. The CF-100 number 760 has played a very significant role in the development of our JD-15D engine at Pratt & Whitney. This has been a, a very effective test bed. It's been very well supported by the government people, by the, the Canadian Defense Forces, and we are extremely grateful for that, that support to the development of high technology in Canada. Between February 1967 and June of 1982, this airplane carried, carried out 460 test flights, and it flew 1,027.8 hours. So you see, we keep our books very accurately. And the, the engine that it was testing is now flying in some 45 countries around the world. CF-100 number 760 has a remarkable history. After a nine-year military career, it became a flying test bed for Pratt & Whitney Canada's new small business jet engine, the JT-15D. With the engine slung under the fuselage, number 760 flew out of St. Hubert on its many test missions. In all, it logged 2,049 hours, and half of these in the service of civil aviation. By doing so, it made a major contribution in the development of Canadian gas turbine engine technology. Test pilot George Graff. During a typical test, the engineer in the back would operate all the controls, including the uh, throttle. And uh, all I had up in front in the front cockpit was the fuel shutoff and the fire extinguisher which really isn't uh, there very much. But he was uh, well equipped with the various instrumentation and uh, was able to operate the engine from shutdown to start up to maximum performance and of course uh, get all the readings simultaneously. We used to call it the lead sled, or the clunk, but uh, it didn't mean it was a clunk. In fact, it was a very well-designed and built airplane. I think the people that flew it uh, have nothing but good to say about it. And so they did in their goodbyes on April 16, 1983. All the players in her past were represented, civil, government, military, all paying homage to a plane that would go down in history as the first all-Canadian jet fighter to take to the air. The CF-100, known as the Canuck, was designed and built by Avro Canada in 1949. Its top speed was 640 miles per hour, its range 2,000 miles. 
They built 692 of them between 1951 and 59, and the 660th, they numbered 760. It was said she was a study in aviation contradictions. The best jet engines in the world mounted on an airframe that was too old-fashioned to utilize full thrust. The best ejection system in the world and the worst design seats and cockpit. Yet, she was our own. The only Canadian designed fighter ever to go into mass production. And that's what they gathered here to celebrate. The federal government represented by Minister of Defense Gilles Lamontagne. For 38 years there has been no major war. We must have done something right. Yes, maybe we had done something right. We built a fighter that never fought. Her last flight took place on June 28, 1982, when pilot George Greff and flight engineer Dan Kettleson took her up above Montreal. You are watching the last flight of the last CF-100 in the world. Lies now only in the minds of those who knew her. Yet she served us long and well. She stands in Saint Hubert on her pedestal, nose in the air. A memory, a symbol, a piece of our aviation past. CF 100, number 760. <laughs> 